April showers bring May flowers. At least that's what I think the old saying is. Hello, my name is Graham and welcome to my booktube channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by. If you've been here for a while, welcome back. Let's jump into our April TBR. Last month I did a theme. I made it the month of green and you know what? It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed having a theme in my TBR and so we're doing it again. Maybe we'll do a theme every single month as long as my brain is able to come up with them. But this theme is April showers. So how do I incorporate that in a book? Is it gonna be a book about rain? No, it's gonna be a book that brings the rain. It brings the tears. It's gonna be books that make me cry and choke up and feel emotions is what this month is all about. And so before we jump into these really sad novels, make sure you jump in the comments Tell me some sad books that you've read so that I can continue to be sad forever. And also, while you're there, go and hit that subscribe button. It's free. And it will make me happy. It will cheer me up after all this sadness. Let's be real. That being said, let's jump into our first book. And this one I am borrowing from my grandmother. It is called The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. It is a historical fiction novel. And I don't know too much about it. I just know that my wife came home one day and said, I want to borrow this book from my grandma because all the nurses on my floor, my wife's a nurse, all the nurses on my floor are saying how awesome this book is and how it made them sad. And so I was intrigued. I was ready and I am ready to cry. So I'm checking out this book. I'm going to read it this month and it's going to be great. If you guys don't know about this book, I kind of like to read the blurbs in the back. Let me know if you like that style or if I should go forward. So the blurb for Chris and Hannah the Nightingale is with courage, grace, and powerful insight, best-selling author Kristen Hanna captures the epic panorama of World War II and illuminates an intimate part of history seldom seen, the woman's war. The Nightingale tells the stories of two sisters separated by years and experienced by ideals, passion, and circumstance, each embarking on her own dangerous path towards survival, love, and freedom in German-occupied, war-torn France. A heartbreaking, beautiful novel that celebrates the resilience of the human spirit and the durability of women. It is a novel for everyone, a novel for a lifetime. Sounds awesome. I did read the first chapter of this a while ago when we first started borrowing the book before my wife started reading it. And it was extremely sad right off the bat. It was like a grandmother in the attic talking to either her son or one of her grandsons. And they point to a picture and they're like, is that you? And then the story starts and I was like, oh, this is gonna be sad. So I'm excited to cry my eyes out with this. And so yeah, this is our first book that's going up to our TBR section. The next book that's going to make me cry this month has the word crying in it. And that is Crying in H Mart. This was really, really popular two years ago. It's a memoir by Michelle Zahner and it's about crying in H Mart. You know, go to the store, start crying. That's the whole premise of the book, is this woman travels to stores and just cries. Now, I honestly don't know too much about it. I just know that it was a book that was really, really popular. And I know when I went to Target, I was looking through or looking around and there was a clearance cart and this was there for $2. And so I bought it because I was like, that's a good book. So let's go ahead and read the synopsis. From the indie rock musician known as Japanese Breakfast, an unflinching, powerful story of family, food, grief, and love. When Michelle Zahner was in her mid twenties, working as a waitress and struggling to launch her music career in Philadelphia, she got a call that her mother was ill. She put her life on hold and flew home to Eugene, Oregon to be with her mother through the final excruciating months of her battle with cancer. This is Zahner's seemingly candid coming of age story of growing apart from and then back together with her Korean identity and of forgiving her own path in the wake of a devastating loss. With humor and heart, she tells of growing up Asian American, straining to meet her mother's expectations, moving across the country, and returning home to reckon with grief. She recalls treasured childhood holidays spent in her grandmother's tiny apartment in Seoul, and now in adulthood, learning to cook the Korean dishes that revive and nourish those memories. She savors the unexpected solace of weekly trips to her favorite Asian grocery store. Vivacious and plain spoken, lyrical and honest, Zahner's voice is as radiantly alive on the page as it is on stage. Crying in H Mart is an exquisite debut, a book to cherish, share, and reread. I believe I saw one of my friends here on BookTube. I'm sorry, your name is spacing me as I'm recording this video. Just read this and they were in tears and so I'm excited to again, bring some April showers in April and cry my little heart out. 
So then it's going back up there. This one is The Art of Racing in the Rain. There's a fun story behind this book. My friend Kent, who I've mentioned in these videos before. Guys, get in the comments to bring Kent on the camera. He's too nervous to do that. So if you want to see Kent, tell him. Tell him down there that he should be on the camera at some point. But anyways, my friend Kent bought me this book because there was somebody at his work who gave this book to him. It was a tradition that he started that every time he would go to a Goodwill, he would always find the art of racing in the rain. And he really loved that story. And so he'd buy it and give it to someone who loved reading. And so Kent has taken on that tradition of when he goes to Goodwill, he'll find the art of racing in the rain. And so he passed it to me. And so now it is my job to read it and be able to go to Goodwill, find a copy of Art of Racing in the Rain and give it to someone else. It will be a tradition that will continues to go forward. And it's really, really cool. What is this book about? Well, I know it's from a dog's perspective or something like that, but let's go ahead and read the back. The back actually says it's a movie thing. So I don't know if anything. So we'll read some of the blurbs that are back here because it looks like this is the movie cover version of it. This is a heart wrenching, but deeply funny and ultimately uplifting story of family, love, loyalty, and hope. A captivating look at the wonders and absurdities of human life as only a dog could tell it. Splendid by People Magazine. The perfect book for anyone who knows that compassion is not only for humans and that the relationship between two souls who are meant for each other never really comes to an end. Every now and then I'm lucky enough to read a novel I can't stop thinking about. This is one of them by Jody Picolti. It's impossible not to love Enzo, Minneapolis Star Tribune. This old soul of a dog has much to teach us about being human. I love this book, Sarah Grimm. So yes, it's now a major motion picture. So this might be one of those where I read it and then watch the book and continue to cry. So thank you, Kent. I'm excited to jump into this and be able to snuggle up with my dog and shed some tears about their life. This next one is a technicality. Like, will this bring me tears of joy? I, or tears of joy. Will this bring me tears and bring April showers? I don't know. But I know my wife cried during it, and that is A Core of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J. Moss. Yes, I am currently reading all of the books in A Court of Thorns and Roses, and with the month of green, I am finishing up A Court of Mist and Fury. But this is the third book that I'll probably read in April, and it's The Court of Wings and Ruin. So if you guys don't know what this series is, it's about... A girl named Feyre who ends up being kidnapped and brought to the Fey world and she ends up having to be there for a deal but it's actually like a twisted deal because fairies were cursed and couldn't say certain things and so she helps break the curse in some way. That's a lot of information and could be borderline spoilery but she goes on this quick adventure in the in the Fey area and becomes devastated. It goes through a major depression in the first book and the second book continues that, and I believe the third book will continue on her depression streak, which makes it very, very sad. If my wife shed tears, I expect that I may also be sad during this book, and, you know, I'm really milking trying to put this in the theme, so it may not really count, but my wife cried, so it makes it on to the April Showers books to read list. So this is book three of the A Court of Thorns and Roses series and so yeah that goes in the tbr section if you guys don't know if you didn't watch the bookshelf one this will be my tbr area so i'll try to make sure the camera sees it if you can't see it right now that's on me but if you ever see it point that way you'll be able to know what i'm currently reading so all right we have one book left that i want to try to read in april there could be more but this is just i pushed myself really really hard in march and I ended up not reading one book in March. I forgot to mention that I didn't read The Shining. It got lost to time and I had to take it back to the library. And yeah, sad day. Also, I read the first chapter and I was like, I'm not in the mood for this because I believe the first chapter said something about Jack's PR smile like four to five times. And I was like, I'm not in the mood for this repetition right now. <laughs> Why do I hate Stephen King, guys? I don't, I don't know. But this does not count as a strike against Stephen King. This is just because I had to return to the library and I was just reading so much other books. So I probably won't check out books in the library for a while as I go through and clean out my TBR. Moving on to the last book and also my favorite author. I haven't read this book yet, but it was on a lot of lists of books that make you cry. And this is My Grandmother Asked Me to Tell You She's Sorry by Frederick Bachman. 
I love Frederick Bachman. It's no secret here. I love Bear Town is my favorite series by him. A Man Called Ove is also what I've read from him. And the story of telling my son about the world, I, I will always butcher that title, but it was great. And so I'm excited to continue reading his stuff because he's just a prolific author in my opinion. There's no one else that really captures human emotion quite like him. And so I'm excited to read this book. So with that being said, let's read the back. Elsa is seven years old and different. Her grandmother is 77 years old and crazy, as in standing on the balcony firing paintball guns at strangers crazy. She is also Elsa's best and only friend. At night, Elsa takes refuge in her grandmother's stories, in the land of almost awake, in the kingdom of Miamis, where everybody is different and nobody needs to be normal. When Elsa's grandmother dies and leaves behind a series of letters apologizing to people she had wrong, Elsa's greatest adventure begins. Her grandmother's instructions lead her to an apartment building full of misfits, monsters, attack dogs, and old crones, but also to the truth about fairy tales and kingdoms and a grandmother like no other. My grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry is told with the same comic accuracy and beating heart as Frederick Bachman's best-selling debut novel, A Man Called Ove. It's a story about life and death and one of the most important human rights, the right to be different. It sounds exactly what Frederick Bachman would write it sounds like something that's going to make me crawl into my bathtub and turn on the shower with all of my clothes on. <laughs> so those are the five books I'm going to read in April. Those are the books that are going to make me cry and bring April showers so that we can have May flowers, which gives you a little hint on what the May TBR is going to be like. Thank you so much for watching this channel. Let me know again in the comments any books that bring you the showers or the tears. And as always, have a fantastic day. Toodles.